My next guest grew up among Hollywood royalty, the son of the late comic legend, my pal Jerry Lewis. He had a front row seat to a golden age of entertainment. I sat down with him recently to talk about his late father's legacy and his own vocation of bringing the gift of mobility to the disabled by founding the American Wheelchair Mission. Here's my exclusive interview with Chris Lewis. Chris, you really follow in your father's footsteps in a couple of ways, and I want to highlight the, the, the two that I know of. First of all, you, what's become a big part of your life's work, the American Wheelchair Mission. This really came from working with your dad all those years on the MDA telethon. Absolutely. Tell us about it. Well, I started working on the MDA telethon when I was 14 years old, and a lot of people have said, you know, don't you want to do what your dad did? And I said, well, I really kind of did. Hmm. Just not the silly stuff, the hmm. stuff that really meant something, you know, the stuff that touched me and touched my parents and our family, and uh, hmm. just felt very natural. And wh where did this, where did the first impulse for this notion of distributing wheelchairs to parts of the world and country that people didn't have? How many people lack wheelchairs? You'd think everybody who wants a wheelchair can get one. Uh, the closest estimate we can come up with is about 100 million people in the world need a wheelchair, cannot afford one, and no other type of mobility device would help them. Wow. Yeah. And you felt called to this particular We're need. not. Yeah, we weren't the only people doing it, but it's been done for quite a few years on a smaller basis. Mm -hmm. But uh, since 2000, there have been some very inspired people that have gotten involved. Uh, the LDS Church was one of the first to get involved. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we work with the Knights of Columbus and the Equestrian Order and right. all sorts of organizations. Caritas has been doing it for mm -hmm. years, and they're our distribution partner in many countries. Mm. So it just it's something that just rang true with me when I heard about it and got involved in it, and I've yeah. been doing it 19 years And now. working with people with special needs was really second nature after what you'd spent so much of your childhood and adulthood doing. Absolutely, because that all inspires prayers, being thankful for my kids and mm -hmm. their health. And mm -hmm. prayer inspires thought, inspires action, and mm. turns into answering prayers. I want to talk about a few other things. You are here in the D.C. area because you yeah. just delivered the second shipment. Uh, I, this is like Smokey and the Bandit, part two. <laughs> you know, you had to go first cross guy, now the second pass. Yes. Um, what did you bring to the Library of Congress? You have been bringing bits of your father's legacy, really. Yeah, my dad donated his entire film and television archive to the Library of Congress back in uh, 2015. Mm. So the first shipment was most of the film, much of the tape. The second one was the second half of all the tape. Hmm. production papers, scrapbooks, photographs, proof sheets, wow. things that pertain to the creation of these yeah, classics. Yeah, but not and... just his films, but also all the audio tapes of his live performances and interviews and television. Wow. And so, yeah, it's just, it's so deep, it's going to take years for them to... Wow. You recently released a box set of the 10, his 10 favorite films. What were they and why? <sighs> they were basically the films that he created himself the most that were closest to him the ones he directed uh, the bellboy his first directorial mm. production the errand boy yeah. uh, cinderfella and the nutty professor and family jewels and uh, through paramount pictures who we've had a wonderful relationship with for 50 years plus they said we there's still a segment of people who want to own the jerry lewis dvds and walmart jumped on it and they sold more of those than they did any of the other product that they had out in that quarter Wow. And so they re-upped it, and we're huh. doing it and hoping to spread it more overseas. Now, to, to what do you attribute that? What do you think that, where, what does that audience need that they're answering there, and do you think he still speaks to? Well, it's, it's fun, it's funny, it's available to any audience. You don't have to worry about what's being said, what's being seen, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what language you speak, because this crazy guy gets you to laugh no matter what he's saying or doing, or falling mm -hmm. down, or... I was stunned. 3,000 canisters you conveyed, film canisters, to the Library of Congress. Yes. It's a massive collection. What, what did you, what shocked you that you found among these papers, these films, that you didn't realize were there or you didn't think you'd find? Constantly being shocked, really? actually, yes. The, the depth of what my dad kept. Huh. Anything that had to do with the creative process, he kept. He had 
kinescopes made of all of his performances starting back in the 1940s. The library wow. was actually saying, we don't have any of these shows. They didn't exist. They were only broadcast live. But he right. would call the American Kinescope Company and say, I want a copy for myself. So uh. all of the Johnny Carson shows that he hosted for weeks at a time, we had kinescopes. All 28 of the Martin Lewis Colgate Comedy Hours from 1950 to 55, he had the only copies. Wow. So it, it's a treasure trove for the library. Well, are, are you planning any further releases? And explain to the audience how this works. You, uh, your father donated all of his films to the Library of Congress. Yeah. What about the copyright? Do you retain that? Yes. Okay, yes. so the, the family, family still retains that. Yes. Okay. And we did some screenings of some of his films up at MoMA at the Museum of Modern Art. The in New Unknown York. Jerry. Tell us about that. Yeah, some of the some of the films that he made himself. Uh, he was behind the camera a lot. Uh, he would have his friends over. They. Dean Martin, Tony Curtis, Janet Lee, they would just be playing around. These and, are kind of uh, at-home productions oh, with some of the biggest stars in the, in the at Hollywood home production, galaxy. production, sync sound, and we're in the process for, of restoring them now, basically, because they were only one copy, 16 millimeter copies, that he showed through his projector 20, 30, 40 times. <laughs> so now we've got the one only, and we're in the process of doing that with the Library of Congress, mm. restoring them. The Museum of Modern Art has a current exhibition running called looking at Jerry Lewis, the Nutty Professor storyboards. So they are actually displaying the storyboards that my dad used to create the Nutty Professor. Wow. And that's on display in their film area. It's opened on the 6th of October, and it runs until the 3rd of March. So you can actually go and see the, mm. the one-of-a-kind artwork that was used in that, and the, the curator, Ma, Ron Magliazzi and huh. Dave Kerr, who are good friends of my dad, yeah. they put together a wonderful perspective of clips from the film and how my dad's creativity influenced all of these things and love his that. love of bright colors. And mm. you've seen his house. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. bright he, red he carpeting. Liked those, he liked that red, yellow, bright colors. In fact, um, I remember Sandra, his, his, uh, his secretary, telling me, Depending on the color he wears that day, we know just what his mood is. <laughs> so that was, it was like a mood ring. Yeah. What was Jerry wearing that day? And everybody could tell what mood yeah. was what they were about to encounter. Yeah. Uh, will the Library of Congress be doing a similar display? I imagine with the treasure trove they have. Yes, have to. yes. And the library and MoMA work together and they're working with other groups. So we're basically doing everything through the Library of Congress because, number one, they're so good at what they do. Yep. And they have such great connections. So it's it's an honor to work with them, and it's opening doors all over the world. I love it. I saw a New York Times piece recently about really his his unreleased film that has arrested so much attention globally. Mm -hmm. They've done documentaries on it at the BBC, yeah. this New York Times piece. I saw a variety piece last year. And it's about the day the clown cried, yes. which is a film he shot, never released. Mm -hmm. I asked him about it when we spoke. I want you to watch this. The Day the Clown Cried? No. No, you have that one. You kept that back. We're not going to talk about that because I'm you tired can. of You can. Uh, everybody and their dog have talked about it. I personally think I would love to see it because of your artistry, but there's such expectations now built about what's in that canister. What was it you said about what I brought to it? The artistry that you have shown throughout your That's work. That's the problem. There was no artistry. No? No, and the work was bad. So you didn't want people to see it? The work wasn't even, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. my critique was it wasn't even something you should show to the public. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it turned out. You say that this was very close to his heart, this film. Yes. yes. Tell me about it, and are there, are there more? Is there a complete cut of this film? Not to my knowledge. I don't believe there is a complete cut. We saw a work print back in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. I think that's all there was because it was a co-production between a French, Swedish, and American company. Ah. And the producer from America ended up not paying the writer. My dad never had the rights to rewrite it. Ah. And it just fell apart. So the negative exists in probably three different countries. and. Wow. Nobody could finish it, even if they wanted to. Really? Because yeah. I know there are some interested. Uh, they, they rehabilitated an old, uh, unfinished Orson Welles movie. Yes. Netflix released it. Would you be interested in seeing something like that happen with The Day the Clown Cried? Well, I think since you can talk about history, I think going back and looking at it from a historical standpoint would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. That, I would think, would be good. Mm -hmm. But since there's no way to get your hands on the actual negative, it was tied up in so much litigation, so many people lost money. Mm. When the New York Times or the LA Times 
articles came out, people were calling my dad's office, threatening him, if you do anything, release wow. anything, we'll see you in a second. And, uh, it's uh, still that's many it's still years tied later. up in a lot of different rights and yeah. and, and and but the the Library of C Congress claims they have in their possession now which you gave them backstage images of yes. from uh, associated so kind of the behind the scenes yes. of shooting the film staging the film uh, maybe that would make a documentary or something I, I actually it would make a in very time. good documentary if the person he had handed the camera to knew how to use it <laughs> Oh, no, it's all over the place. It's a mess. Several 2,000-foot reels of uh, color reversal film, and you see his shoes more than you see wow. what's happening behind the camera. When I was with your dad at the house in Vegas, he showed me clips of his live stage act yes. from the 60s in Paris to, and I saw him later in Vegas as a kid with Sammy Davis on stage, which I knew you were involved in mm -hmm. at the time. Um, any any thought of releasing those live performances or a, a, a collection of those? Yes, as a matter of fact, there are some that have been available in the past. HBO did one on Jerry and Sammy. Mm -hmm. uh, we have several of the live performances that were released years ago back on videotape. Mm -hmm. And we have the raw footage from Australian performances that he did in 99 before he got sick. Wow. So that, that's kind of like untouched gems that we can go back and put something together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk about your work now. Um, I, I imagine there's a big hole in your heart. Well, I know there is with the absence of your dad. Um, you were so close to him. And, and as he told me when I asked him, what, what's your legacy? He said, that guy right there. And he pointed to you. Uh, um, and you are carrying that legacy forward. Do you feel a sense of, is it a burden? Is it a, is it a weight that you feel you have to carry that no, legacy not, forward? No, not a burden or a weight at all. It's, it's a, an honor, a pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, my dad was many things, but the the level of creativity that he attached to doing things right, mm -hmm. he always found a way to do it right, and he taught me that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the legacy that I'm keeping alive is we're helping people who can't help themselves. Mm -hmm. We're answering people's prayers. He was the one who said, we're doing God's work on earth. That's the first time I heard mm -hmm. it is when he said it. About MDA, yes. the work at MDA yeah. and the telephone. And that... It's amazing what you can accomplish if it doesn't matter who gets the credit. Mm. That was another one of his favorite sayings. Mm -hmm. What's next for the American Wheelchair Mission? What, what, what would you like to see happen next? Well, we, we have been delivering a lot of wheelchairs into uh, the Christian families in the Middle East, working mm. with the Caritas organizations in Jerusalem, Lebanon, Jordan. Mm. It's very frustrating. It's hard. It's hard okay. to help these people. Um, we're doing a lot in Vietnam. Caritas Vietnam, I think, is one of our best distribution partners in the world. Uh, but the need is enormous. It's just, mm. just enormous. But the Knights of Columbus have been there for us, helping the American veterans yeah. who don't qualify for VA benefits or need an additional wheelchair. The Knights are there to supply them with it. And mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful. There's, there's more of that that we can do. We'd like to get more people involved. Did you know there are retired priests and nuns who don't have wheelchairs? No. Wow. I had that discussion with Cardinal Dolan in New York April of last year, and we have a program going on with the Knights in New York now where they're working wow. to get wheelchairs to any priest, none that needs them. Wow. Yeah. Chris Lewis, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for all you do and, and for the joy that you continue to spread via your father's work and the good work you're doing with the wheelchair mission. It's, it's my it's pleasure. incredible. Thank you. You can find out about Chris Lewis and his work at the American Wheelchair Mission at amwheelchair.org. And looking at Jerry Lewis, the Nutty Professor Storyboards runs through March 3rd at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Visit MoMA.org for more details.